part one on one with Mr. Burger. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Art One on One. I'm your pod boss, Nicole Jordan, alongside Mr. Berger. Hello, good to see you. <laughs> yes, great to see you and be sitting with you as well. Three times a charm. Yes, this is our third introduction. Welcome to another episode of Art One on One. I'm Nicole Jordan, your pod, ba- pod boss, alongside Mr. Berger. Hi, how are you doing today? How is your day doing? <laughs> so... It's good to see you. Apparently, was that better than the first couple? Well, considering you see me all the time, no. Oh. They well, don't good. know that, though. I hope, yes. you, I hope your day is going well. My day was amazing. Good. Wonderful. Uh, what did you do today? I worked on school stuff, and I worked on high school stuff, and I worked on college stuff, and I worked on my class stuff, and I... Played Fortnite for a little bit. So, we'll stay away from the Fortnite. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah. We got. We have these new scenes. It's like the. It's like the Himala- Himalayas. You know, it's interesting. When I was in college, I always called them the Himalaya Mountains. Mm-hmm. But then I got to college, and they taught me that it's not called the Himalaya Mountains. It's called the Himalaya Mountains. And isn't it like? tomato tomato like different people say it different yeah. ways just like artist names i think you say them Pro- differently yeah, than yeah. other people sometimes probably well i know i say artist names differently but it's, another one is um growing up it was always the what was the the, the mountains i can't I, I don't know if i can say it wrong anymore but it's the Appalachian Mountains. Uh, Appalachian Mountains. Appalachian? That's what I would say. And Appalachian Mountains is wrong. It's called the Appalachian Mountains. Well, I don't know if you can say it's wrong. It's it's the, it's the mispronunciation. Okay. But it's, You correct me on a lot of things. Though. But it's like Van Gogh is the true pronunciation where Van Gogh is the Americanized pronunciation. I mean, both are accepted in some form or yeah. fashion it just depends like if you're talking to someone from the Appalachian Mountains they'll say oh, it's not the Apple Appalachian excuse me the Appalachian Mountains it's the you know or it's not Himalayas or H- Himalayas it's the Himalayas or interesting it's you know tomato to- like exactly. you said tomato tomato but at the end of the day I mean if that was my home I would I would prefer people to ca- call it by its proper it's name like, but it's like another one Des Moines. Do you know how many people don't pronounce Des Moines? My mom De- pronounces it. <laughs> pronounces it Des Moines. Des Moines, and she's from Iowa. I, yeah, I don't. Des Moines. I just. No, you don't pronounce. You don't. You don't enunciate the s's. Oh. Yeah, Des Moines. That was a shirt I saw at the at the art festival when we went remember it's like des moines where the s's, s's are, are silent, silent and i couldn't remember i love the shirt and i couldn't remember what the last part of the shirt was we need to find another art festival that we can travel to Ooh. So, to let us know like some good art festivals to go to because that was i really we talked about that but i really enjoyed that we talked about that in the previous episode right. but that's what okay said. so let's get down to brass tacks the uh we're going to start with this segment, aren't we? Yes. Ask the Art Guides. Ask the Art Guides, where we're going to consult the Art Guides through our Oracle cards that we purchased in Kansas City on a little trip out there. And these cards are kind of interesting in that they feature the life, the work, and the inspiration of different artists on these cards. And we use these cards to bolster or to have a conversation starter. Yes. And, and they're these, very random. I mean, the artist we pulled yeah, last week well, was a very contemporary. It, some are some are kind of modern. Some are <coughs> more historic, uh, all over the place. But yeah, Lawrence King Publishing produces these cards. I'm sure you can find them anywhere. Cards like these are sold. You say that, but you've never even looked. And I hope that they are. I I've seen them online. No, oh, okay. So yeah, I, I haven't. Yeah, they're online. Okay. So, at any rate, we're going to do 
the magic touch and the who, who's the artist that we have pulled for this episode ah i way way i would have never pronounced that even remotely i way way yeah he's a he's a very contemporary artist <coughs> from china <coughs> and he he does lots of interesting things uh, for example, at the Des Moines Art Center, they have a piece of his that's um, little ceramic sunflower seeds. They're little sunflower seeds. They look, I mean, it looks like a sunflower seed, but they're all hand-painted, mm -hmm. and they're made out of clay. And you buy a bag of them? You buy a sack of them? I don't know. I don't know how the Des Moines Art Center bought them, how they get shipped. But they, they buy, like, a sack of these sunflower seeds, and then they just... That like they just pour them on like a circular table like this. They just pour them in the middle, and it just kind of is just is a big. Is that what is he, he's holding? Uh, maybe. I could only assume that he's holding sunflower seeds. You can't really tell mm -hmm. from the from the image there, but but that's one of the things that he's known for. He also took a a very old piece of ceramic pottery, and he put Coca Cola across the sculpted coca-cola into it mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so so he's done some different um conceptual things i would call him a conceptual artist he's also gotten into some trouble for his political views uh his outspokenness about certain things in china um he has been i mean his life has been on the line for the art that he's made That's, and so things like that. So yeah, he's 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 a he, he's an artist that has put his entire existence on the line to make the things that he makes. I like the life one again. When authority says to be quiet, get a loudspeaker. Yeah, we've picked that one a couple a uh, couple uh, once. Our couple last, weeks in a row. Last week. This will be two weeks in a row. Usually we go with inspiration, but when authority says to be quiet, get a loudspeaker. And that's very much Ai Weiwei, you know, uh, the Chinese government and things like that have called him out for his, the things that he says, the things that he makes, the, you know, the, the creations that he, he, that he, that he's done. Do you think he was publicly able, I, I have, I don't know him from anything but do you think he was able to get away with more because of who he was with what he that's was able some to of say it. yeah i think that's some of it but it's also like um i think if if my memory serves me right he was in like home prison and he had been running from the authorities and because he was so outspoken against the government and people were listening to him and he had such a platform um, and he was putting people to work, and I think, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to say anything that's un, uncorrect, incorrect. True. But I do think that he, I think that he's, I mean, he's put lots and lots of people to work in uh, in China, making the sunflower seeds and making different things. And so, and do you think he's well respected there, or he's oh, more? Oh, for sure. Yeah. He's one of those artists that because he has made some really kind of interesting works that have really grabbed people's attention, he has had the ability to have some protection. It's very similar to Picasso. Like, Picasso was one of the artists that Adolf Hitler hated during World War II. But when Adolf Hitler had occupied Paris during World War II, uh, basically it was hands off, leave Picasso alone. Because it would have been such an international incident, everybody would have known, it would have been a huge uproar if anything would have happened to him at the hands of their hands. Uh, so they left him alone because he was, he was too important to get rid of if that makes any sense even though Hitler hated him he couldn't get rid of him um, and it's just and, and in that and so during the entire <laughs> during the entire period of time when 
the Nazis were in, you know, in control of Paris, he lived in his apartment and did his own thing. Do you think that's what made a big part of what made him popular? Being so outspoken like that? Like it helped to make his art popular? He was well, he had made uh, Guernica, he had made several anti-war paintings. Um what about Ai Weiwei? That's who I was asking oh, specifically. Oh. Sorry, I was transitioning uh, back to Oh, I'm Ai sorry. Ai Weiwei. Uh, Ai Weiwei, say ask me again? Well, I was just asking, do you think him being so controversial and outspoken like was something he used to get his art or it made his art more popular? I think that a lot of the attention that's on China and Tibet and different parts of the world, especially in that particular part of Asia around China and his perspective and his outspokenness definitely lent to him becoming being, being noticed. More and more over time, the, the viewpoint of the museum is less and less white Christian male. And as a white Christian male, I mean, I definitely want, I would want to be a part of the, the museum conversation. I want my artwork to be in, included. But I also understand that there have been a long, long, long history of white Christian men having their perspective bashed over people's heads, having the perspective of somebody from China, having the perspective of somebody from Africa, having the perspective of a the black community or the Asian community or the, uh, the Latino community or f females or transgender or all of these other people that are in our world, them having the ability to be included in the conversation also needs to be taken into account. I think it's very important for, um, you, know, you know, again, as a white guy, I definitely want, I want to be able to speak, but I also don't think that just because I want to speak, everybody else needs to shut up and listen. Right. I think everybody should have an opportunity to say their speak piece. Speak their truth, which is what he's saying, really. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, being who he is from where he's from in his perspective, I think that he definitely um, needs to be a part of the the conversation when when people are going to a museum or whatever and and again I think that a lot of times people will see his work and they don't really get it but like for example in China they were uh, if my memory serves me correctly the, it was this industry of making ceramic pottery and the glazes and all of that like tr generations of people worked in these ceramic industries mm -hmm. and they went out of business and people weren't buying their ceramics from China anymore and so these people were like generations were just like out of work well what do they do so he puts them to work he's like I'll pay for you to make these these uh, seeds. sunflower seeds and just uh, we'll, we'll, we'll make the molds and we'll just cook them up and you'll glaze them and we'll fire them and we'll sell them and he'll and he's got room like rooms like built huge warehouse type buildings filled with these ceramic sunflower seeds like there's uh, videos that I've seen of him walking across these huge mounds of ceramic sunflower seeds hmm. that's neither here nor there the, the point of it is that he sells them and he puts these people to work that yeah. wouldn't uh, otherwise have an opportunity to do what they've been so trained to do. So he speaks his voice, but he also supports his people. Com yeah, his he commutes, yeah. He, yeah, his community, and, and he keeps people, you know, working and going forward and being able to feed their families. Well, because that uh, could be, I mean, obviously, as an artist, that could be risky. It could go both ways. If you're a person that voiced your opinion, look at them. <laughs> well, this may not be the greatest example, but, like, the Dixie Chicks, we're going to see them in August, and... They're now the chicks. The chicks. Well, because they really had to reinvent themselves right. because of the 
controversial statement one of them made. And yeah, well, and, and I think that that's part of the, for me, that's part of the reason that I like them is that, number one, they're great musicians, right. they're great singers, mm -hmm. but also the fact that, you know, whether you're lean toward the conservative side or lean toward the liberal side, you somewhere in the middle, you know, I think everybody has a right to say their piece. Speak the truth. And if you're, you know, uh, just the other day, I was talking to a mutual friend of ours. We we're talking about politics and we we're talking about these things. And, and his opinions are very divergent from my opinions. And, you know, he gives me a little bit of guff. Oh, are you one of those types? And I give him a little guff. Are you one of those types? But it's never... You know what? You're a no good son of a gun because you don't think like I think, and never does he come at me and say, "Oh, you're a no good son of a gun because you don't think the way I think." It's that's your perspective. This is my perspective. I don't agree with you. You don't agree with me. But at the same time, you respect each other, and you can have a good conversation. We can have a civil conversation and have our disagreement. And at the end of the day, I'm not going to change his mind, and he's not going to change mine. And we just kind of let it ride there, listen. and that's and that's fine. Yeah. But we can have a civil discussion, conversation, debate, if you will. But it doesn't have to get into a fist fight, or you know, somebody's disinvited to Thanksgiving, or right, whatever. All right. Anyway. Well, I think we've. Yeah, and Ai Weiwei is definitely an artist that if you're not familiar with Ai Weiwei, I would highly recommend yeah. doing a little research. On him, he's a he's a very interesting conceptual artist. Do you have a video on him? I do not. Wow, that's I, a surprise. I do not have Shocker. a video on Ai Weiwei, but maybe I should. He maybe. sounds. I, I would like to learn more about him. Maybe that's one of the things that I've got to do now is make a Ai Weiwei video. There you go. Um, so the big video this week. Speaking of videos, speaking yes. of, was the third. Impressionist art exhibition, oh. and uh, we're at number three. So the second was much more of a success, and it, it got than the first. The, the, than the first, <laughs> yeah. it, it, they're building, they're right. building right. up, right? And in, in the third installment, they're starting to gain a little bit of steam. They're not quite where they want to be. Uh, Very similar I artists in the third uh, one. Similar, right. different but similar. A slightly smaller group, but uh, some people are leaving, some people are coming in. But yeah, it's it's that's one of those things. Like the 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 group um, of of artists that was known as the Impressionists includes people that were and were not Impressionists. Which the one that was not that got involved with the second one. Well, fill me in. Who was that? Well, there was Degas was in the first Degas. Degas was in the first second and the third but uh, Are we back like financially back at something no that was um, Calibut oh. that's Gustav Calibut and he was the financial backer and he gained more and more steam as as things would progress and he put a lot of the financial backing behind making sure that they could get the get the space and the Degas show was the one that wasn't an impressed wait. he was not he was a realist so he kind of that that didn't sit well with all and he well, he was kind of pushing a lot of the people that were making art the way he was making it and he was you know he had some financial clout behind his name initially and um eventually you know but but there again there were people that would go in, they would go out, like Camilla Pizarro. He is the only artist that was in every single one of the eight exhibitions. He's the only one. Not Monet, not, you know, on and on and on. Go back and watch the video. You can check it out right up here. And I would encourage you to go back and check that one out and see all of the ins and outs and how things have evolved. And by the time we get to number four coming up in about a month, uh, we will see things kind of, kind of an interesting transition in how things evolve as we go from the second to the third to the fourth, 
uh, in each one of these monthly installments. So no big changes in the third one. It's just building not, steam. Not huge changes. I mean, there are some changes, but I wouldn't say it wasn't like... So the, what's the, the highlight? They weren't stuff? really reinventing the wheel. They, uh, they were starting to get a little bit more critical acclaim. A little bit more a little bit more acceptance by the critics and the public. Okay. People are starting to say, oh, there might be something to this. Uh, it wasn't there yet. And it wouldn't be there for another 30 years. Um, because how, how, how often were these done? Like how much were they spaced out in between each one? Approximately. It, 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 it varies. Like for sometimes there was a year. Sometimes it was annual. Um, like there, they would there's post the art for like what three months or something. Before? One month. One month before. Yeah. So the 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 show was up and down in a month, and um, so around a year before they did another one. Yeah. So they would. Yeah. And again, it, it varies, but they would go up in. Uh, so like this one was in uh, 1877. The one prior was 1876. The one prior to that was 1874. Okay. And then there was 1874, 1875. They did a, a kind of auction-y type thing. Then, but kind of didn't really work out very well. Then 1877, they brought it back. So there's like a year gap. Um, but again, they tried to do it annually. And with Calibut, we see, again, that financial backing that you really need to have to be able to make something like that work. I mean, a lot of these guys, like Alfred Sisley, he, he lived in poverty his whole career. Um, he struggled. He he changed and moved houses all the time because he was always looking for a cheaper and cheaper place because he couldn't afford to, I mean, he wanted to make art, and he couldn't afford to live and make art and work a day job and do the thing and, and try to be involved in this, that, and the other thing and make a you know, make an income, and even artists, like big-named artists like Monet, he struggled and struggled and struggled for years, and it wasn't until the end of his life that he finally started to get enough clout and recognition that he could... I'm beginning to see this as like a pattern with art, people not becoming famous until after they well, and again, I think die or get hold. And... and to some degree, that's true, but to some degree, that's also a stereotype. Although some may say that a stereotype is often based upon something that's real, you know, um, you know, is it stereotypical that I'm a Swedish person and I love to eat fish? Yeah, that's a stereotype, but it's true. I'm Swedish and I love to eat fish. You do? I love it. What? I love to eat fish. Okay, this is interesting because I just talked to you the other day about being healthy and eating more fish and you never said anything. I love eating fish. Okay, you might want to pipe up and tell I me. I like, it doesn't, it doesn't even really matter the fish. Catfish, salmon, salmon steaks. Oh man, I got a really great... There's so much fish in the freezer. <laughs> Get on it. There you go. I, okay, I got some, to. I got some, <laughs> I got some, uh, some We're cedar... We're getting slightly off topic. Some cedar planks. <laughs> We'll get those all primed and ready to go. Grill those suckers out for dinner. Okay, so the third one. You're getting hungry now. There, I well, yeah, I'm a so, little hungry too, and it's yeah, it's almost, that time. So, any piece of work, piece of art that stands out, or that you, I mean, you, ha I feel like you hate this question, but like that um, it, during that particular se session. That during that exhibition. Exhibition. Uh, I think during that exhibition, the pieces that really jump out as really, really important were probably the paintings that were done by Monet in the train station. He did a series of works in a train station. He got had to get special permission to be able to go and sit and paint these trains. And uh, he, he was kind of in the way. <laughs> you know, people are out there yeah. trying to do their work. I mean, imagine if you're a, working on a, a train line and you're trying to get people in, get people out, you're trying to move cargo, you're trying to do all of the things that somebody that works around a train is doing and you got some guy sitting in a in a well, chair mine in his own business painting in the middle of the whole operation you'd probably say jack you need to move it along but again he got permission to do it 
and um, and he did a, a series of paintings of the train stations that are very very popular, and that kind of began his ideas of uh, creating things um, uh, over time. So he would do haystacks, or he would do a cathedral, and he would show how light changed from. Um, from the morning to the afternoon to the evening, he would show uh, how seasons change things. The 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 all of the light, how light and affects the color and all of those things in his works. But when you talk about the light, that makes me think of the. Did you interview the artist at the Des Moines Art Festival that had the? So he would like take pictures of cathedrals or old buildings or vehicles or different things, and then he'd put different lights. Yeah, I did. That was the first. The first. Person I that I interviewed. That was there. There. You should uh, check out his art. It was way cool. Well, it's a it's a couple. Their art. And uh, there, I think that he's the photographer, but she does the color uh, strobes and all of that. And there, what is the name of their group? It's the uh, they're the the Flash Knights, and the Flash Knights uh, are from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. They do really cool stuff, and uh, yeah, so. I'll, uh, they actually they have a YouTube channel. I'll uh, I'll put a link right. right up here. So go check out the Flash Nights, and um, yeah, they do have some really cool stuff. That was one that we both actually liked together. Yeah, maybe we should buy a piece of theirs and put it in the living room. I do want a new piece of art. For <laughs> Not changing is hard, but Change. sometimes it's a necessary evil. But uh, anyway. I think we can we can drop it there since we've I think we've covered all the bases. I think so. Is that correct, Pod Boss? Yep. Talked about the exhibition. We talked about the card. I think we're good. All the all the major stuff. So you know, make sure you check us out all over social media, whether that's Spotify, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. Obviously, uh, all of those. Say all of social media. I don't. Think all of the things. I mean, there's. And another one that I, I very frequently forget about is Redbubble. You can buy garb like this, uh, the the T-shirts, stickers. There's all kinds of stuff on Redbubble.com, and you can find me there. And I've got all kinds of designs that I make on all kinds of different topics. It's not just my art stuff i also do pro wrestling stuff which i'm really into you did give me a tank and it had i chose hank's design and yeah. he was so hank was excited, excited about it i was and, wearing his art and i do have a, a series of of artworks on hank that he's designed um and jump in there next i do have coming out soon i do have a um a, a, a new couple of designs from Hank and Etta when they came to visit us uh, not too long ago where they uh, so you can go out and uh, you know it's not too early to start Christmas shopping there you go. or whatever support your local artist by uh, jumping onto redbubble.com and uh, that's not an advertisement it's just the you know, it's just a fun thing. It's just a fun thing. thing to do. It's just like a hey, you know, public service announcement. If you're looking for stuff, here's an opportunity. Support an artist. You know, whatever. I've looked at other. I've looked at other venues. I've looked at other uh, places that that have uh, art supported stuff like that. Maybe I'll do another one or two. Um, but we'll see. All right. But anyway, that's new here and there. Thanks for watching and. Uh, We'll see you next we'll time. We'll see you next time. Have a good day. Hey, Dad. Hey, Dad.